Well, finally tonight, NASA is moving ahead with plans to launch its newest telescope into space this week. The James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, will attempt to blast off on Christmas Eve from French Guiana in South America. The $10 billion telescope is considered the successor to the Hubble Space Telescope and is a joint effort between NASA and the European and Canadian space agencies. Bill Oakes is the project manager for JWST, and he joins us now from French Guiana. Bill, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, as a lot of people know, a Catholic priest is credited with forming the theory now known as the Big Bang, and now the Webb Telescope could help find some pieces to that puzzle, which is really exciting. Uh, what is the JWST? What is it going to show us? So web is actually it's so one it's an infrared telescope and by an infrared telescope we look at heat we don't look at the visible light that you and i see as light travels through the universe it the wavelengths shift and they elongate and that's what shifts it into that infrared spectrum so an infrared spectrum that gives us insight into a lot of different things and when we combine that with the size of our telescope we're going to be able to see back to about a 200 million years after the big bang and this is at the exact moment that we have the creation of the first stars and galaxies in our universe. So we're going to be able to look back, and that kind of breaks that down is... into a lot of different things. Um, they can, you can look at protoplanetary systems, which is the formation of uh, planets around new stars, um, the assembly of galaxies, and so forth, as well as exoplanets, and that's very exciting. Yeah, that's absolutely incredible. Um, for those of us that, you know, really may not know, can you tell us what makes the difference uh, between the JWST from the Hubble? And then also, you know, what happens to Hubble? So I'll address the first part. Um, Hubble will keep operating. We're actually looking forward to doing some joint observations with Hubble. Um, so as so long as Hubble keeps hanging in there, uh, we'll, be, we'll be doing some joint operations with that. As far as the differences go, um, I mentioned the infrared so Hubble is a visible ultraviolet telescope. We are an infrared telescope. The other different, main difference is the size. Um, we're about, set, our primary mirror is about almost seven times the size of, of Hubble's mirror. But it's about seven times the size of, of Hubble's mirror. So that gives us, when you combine that with the advancements in our instrument detectors, we're about 100 times more sensitive or powerful than Hubble. That's going to make a huge difference in what we can see. And when you combine that with the infrared aspects of JWST, it's going to be amazing the type of things that we'll be able to look at and study. That really is incredible. Really hard to believe. Uh, we have all this technology. And I understand the telescope in this week's launch is really years in the making. Uh, can you tell us more about that, the telescope, and the journey that it made to French Guiana? And also, why was French Guiana chosen? Okay, so years in the making, we're about 20 plus years in the making. That is not unusual for a mission of this size. Hubble was kind of the same way. Over, those, over that time, we had about 10,000 people work on the JWST project. Um, so it's, it's really, uh, this is the accumulation of some, for some folks, their entire careers with uh, the launch that we have coming up at the end of this week. Um, the journey that we took to get the, well, let's talk about why we got the, why, we, why we're in French Guiana. JBST is an international mission. Um, part of the European contribution is the rocket. They've also contributed two instruments, as well as Canada contributed an instrument. But the rocket is from Europe, and their launch site is in French Guiana in South America. To get here, our final assembly of our observatory was at um, Northrop Grumman's plant out in Redondo Beach in California. Um, when we are too big to fit inside, let's say, a C-5. Um, so we couldn't really fly down. And if we did fly down, from where the airstrip was to the launch site, there were seven bridges that would not withstand the weight of JWST as well as all the associated hardware and shipping containers and so forth with it. So that drove us to a more unique type of way to ship to a launch site. So we left on a boat out of... Uh, Sealed, Navy Seal Beach Weapons Station down in, uh, down just south of Long Beach in, um, out in California. Went down along the coast of Central America, went through the Panama Canal, then around the northern coast of South America until we got to French Guiana. And that 
journey took about 16 days. Oh, that is amazing. And Bill, you know, for those who would like to follow along with the progress, how can they do so? And where can we watch the launch? Um, you can always go to almost any website. Uh, JWST has their own website. Just Google JWST, Google JWST launch. Um, but if you go to NASA TV, um, you'll be able to watch the launch and the commentary from there. Right now, we are slated to launch uh, at 7.20 Eastern time. Um, the broadcast, from what I understand, will start about an hour and 20 minutes with commentary prior to that. And then there'll be periodic press releases and so forth throughout the first, um, well, first six months of On Orbit is our commissioning period, and we'll have periodic release uh, uh, press releases during that time frame, as well as videos and so forth. Well, Bill, this is all very exciting. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us about this. We really appreciate it. Bill Oakes, Project Manager for the James Webb Space Telescope. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.